The theme of this convention is hallelujah. Shall we give Jesus the highest hallelujah ever? Hallelujah! That word simply means praise the Lord. It's a spontaneous response of praise to every issue of life that provokes God to manifest himself. Tonight, God will manifest himself to you again. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your great work in this convention since it began. Thank you for amazing impartation via various teachings and ministrations. Thank you for what you have done again with us tonight in the first message. And thank you for what the night holds for every one of us. Receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. I pray tonight that no one lives here without something in his hand. I pray that everyone's issue shall be turned to a testimony tonight. I pray that all of the virtues and praise will begin to manifest itself in our life from this time forward. In Jesus' precious name. Shall we give the Lord a big hand of praise? Amen. I count it a privilege tonight to be asked to be part of this service in sharing fellowship with the saints. I consider myself a part and parcel of this ministry and I'm grateful to God for that privilege. Amen. I also want to thank God for the life of my father and the Lord, the grace that I walk in him and that's on the increase day and night. More grace more grace and more grace. Now, I'll be speaking tonight on what I've captioned, understanding the wonders in praise. The result we obtain in any endeavor is a function of our level of understanding of it. As ordinary as praise may appear, the Bible says, sing ye praises with understanding. Otherwise, it will be mere entertainment. The book of Psalms, chapter 47 and verse 7, it says, sing ye praises with understanding. I know a lot have been said. I believe a lot of this will be mere reminders to some of us who are just new believers. It will be fresh to you. But I believe that everyone will take away something from this service in the name of Jesus Christ. What is in praise? Again, let me start by saying most people think praise is a response to the acts of God in our life. Why that may be true, it is not the whole truth. We don't only praise God for what he has done, we praise him to get him to do what we desire. Praise is not about what God has done, it's about what we desire to see God do. The two of them is what makes the whole. We must respond with praise to what he has done, but we provoke his intervention by praise at the same time. For instance, let the people praise thee, O God, and let other people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield our increase. So we don't only praise God for what is done, we praise him for what we desire to see him do. Praise him, and then the earth will yield our increase. You want to see increases? Then praise him. 
Now, what are the divine virtues in praise that results in the wonders that praise provokes amongst God's people and in the life of God's people? One, the presence of God is in praise. God inhabits the praises of his people. And God's presence will always make a difference any day, any time, anywhere. You can't be in praise and miss his presence. Praise is God's spiritual habitat. He endures the praises of his people. The book of Psalms chapter 22 and verse 3. And watch, when Israel came out of Egypt, God was their sanctuary. God's presence was with them. The sea saw them, it fled. God's presence makes the believer more than a conqueror. You don't struggle to make things happen. His presence makes it happen. Psalm 114 and verse 1 to 9. He said, when Israel came out of Egypt, God was their sanctuary. The sea saw them it fled. Jordan was driven back. The mountains keep like rams, and the hills like young lambs. What elder did you see that thou swellest? Fled it? And no Jordan that was driven back. He said, Tremble thou art at the presence of God. The things that trouble us, tremble as we praise Him. God steps in and gets them scattered. Everything troubling anyone here tonight, as you connect with the spirit of praise in this convention, you see them no more again forever. What is in praise that works wonders? The voice of the Lord is in praise. In Isaiah chapter 30, verse 29 and 31, 29 and 30, the Bible says, you shall have a song as in the night, when the holy solemnity is kept, as when one goeth forth with a harp to the mountain of the Lord. Then the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. The Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. And through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down, that smote with a rock. The voice of the Lord comes alive in the midst of praise. Watch out for his voice. In his voice lies our victory over the battles of life. Watch out for his voice. The voice of the Lord is in praise. Many have never heard from God before because they have not been in real praise. It's time to get into the mystery of praise so you can assess the voice of God with all clarity. God is still speaking. The Bible says the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The Almighty thundereth. Psalm 29 and verse 3. The voice of the Lord is upon many waters. He says, the voice of the Lord breaketh the cedar. Even the cedar in Lebanon. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. We encounter the voice of God in praise. Many, many people here who have been working with God over time, have experienced that time and again. The voice of the Lord comes very clear in the midst of praise. Elijah said, bring me a mistress. And as she began to pray, the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. And the word of the Lord came alive. And what a transformation that brought. The voice of the Lord comes clear in the midst of praise. It's time to get into praise and assess the voice of the Lord that makes us more than conquerors. It makes us more than conquerors. David, that praise giant, asked the Lord, shall I go up? Second, Chron Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 18 to 22. Will you deliver the fleece into my hand? And God said, go up. Very clear. When we get into real realms of praise, we hear the voice of God in its clearest form. 
Your prayer's life won't stop at this convention. It will follow you all the days of your life. You will always need the voice of God to make the most of your life. And that comes through, comes clear in the midst of praise. It comes clear in the midst of praise. What is in praise that works wonders? The wonder working power of God is in praise. Who is like unto thee, O God? Who is like thee? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. God does wonders in the midst of praise. Paul and Silas were locked up in the prison. Acts 16, verse 25 to 30. They prayed, nothing happened. Then they sang praises. The other prisoners were mocking them again. They were unperturbed. They were undisturbed. And suddenly, God stepped in. God stepped in. The foundation of the prison was shaken. And everyone's chain fell off. The prison gates flung open at the sound of praise. If anyone has been in prison here by the wickedness of the wicked, as you get into praise as a lifestyle, suddenly, the foundation of your prison shall be shaken. Your chain shall fall off. And you walk out into liberty. In the name of Jesus. The wonder walking power of God is in praise. What is in praise? Say with me the favor of God. Can I hear you say it loud? Every man, every believer that makes praise his lifestyle never runs out of favor. God's presence always attracts favor. God's presence will always make a difference. We saw the people praising God. And God gave them favor before all the people. And God added to the church daily, such as should be saved. As chapter 2 and verse 47. Praise is an atmosphere for the release of God's favor. We saw the story of this Herodias daughter in Mark chapter 6. Verse 21 to 23. She danced and pleased Herod well. Who are we trying to please in our praise? God. Who are you trying to please in your praise? God. She danced and pleased Herod well. And Herod swore. Ask me anything to the half of my kingdom, and it's yours. There was a downpour of favor in response to her high praises that pleased King Herod well. When we praise him to his utmost pleasure, he unleashes his favor on our life. No one here will run out of favor again all the days of your life. As praise becomes your lifestyle, favor will become your companion. Every air of misfortune that you used to know, you see them no more again forever. Because acceptable praise, God pleasing praise we always bring the believer into favor with God and with man. Therefore, I decree that beginning from tonight, your life will never run out of favor. Somebody believe that. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Let me hear your loudest. Hallelujah. What is in praise that works wonders? Praise 
provides us access into God's presence. And among the blessings we have in there is in Psalm chapter 16 and verse 11. Thou will show me the path of life, for in thy presence is fullness of joy. And on your right hand, there are pleasures evermore. We assess the path of life, of life in his presence. And the Bible says, let us enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Let's be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. Everyone that is in praise never lacks access to revelation. David, that praising giant, the Bible said, and he being a prophet and knowing afar off, the deeper you are into praise, the greater your access to revelation. And every revolution in the life of a believer is steered by a revelation of the world. Every dramatic turnaround in anyone's life is a function of his depth of insight in God. But that is facilitated, that is enhanced by a praiseful life. A praiseful life. Having a spontaneous response of praise to every situation that may arise in your life, you have access to revelation. Many years ago, our last daughter was accosted by the spirit of death. And I sat in my office with a smile before the most high God. There must be a way out. Thank you, Jesus. Because the door can never be shut against you. There must be a way out. Now, in a moment, I gain access to three striking revelations from scriptures. I knew immediately the battle was over. Praise will always provide access to revelation that will turn your situation around. Stop murmuring. It won't help you one bit. Stop complaining. It will only complicate your issues. In everything, give thanks. It will show the way of escape. In everything, praise Him. In everything, respond with praise. You cannot mismanage my life. Jesus, I'm in good hands with you. Jesus, I have assurance of victory with you. Settle with God. If you complain and murmur against your helper, when will your help come? Neither murmur, you are some of them also murmur. And what destroyed of the destroyer. Revelation is facilitated by praise. By praise. You'll never miss your steps in the name of Jesus. What else is in praise? Say with me, supernatural breakthroughs. Can I hear you say it louder? Say it the loudest you can. Because you will have what you say. God said to Jehoshaphat and his people of Judah. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself in praise and you see my salvation. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17 and then verse 22. And as they began to sing and to praise, God stepped in. They were confronted by two great kings. Each of the kings was stronger than Jehoshaphat. But God leveled them out without shooting an arrow. Supernatural breakthrough is in praise. No one here shall be stranded again. No one here shall be stagnated again. Every breakthrough of your desire shall locate you tonight. Shall locate you tonight. 
In Joshua chapter 6 and verse 20, the walls of Jericho fell down flat at the shout of praise. We are told that wall was so thick, the breath would take six courses of chariots in a race. Even if it fell, it would still be a war. But it fell down flat or it sank. As at the shout of praise, God stepped down from heaven on that wall. And the wall sank flat, sank flat before them. Every wall of barrier between you and your promised land we sink here tonight. Every wall of barrier tearing you in the face, we sink here tonight. All are the shout of praise. All are the shout of praise. What else is in praise that works wonders? Say with me, fresh oil is in praise. Say it louder. Fresh oil is in praise. In Psalm 92, verse 1 and 2, it's a give, good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praise unto his name is the Most High God, to tell of his loving kindness in the morning and his faithfulness every night. Then, verse 10, my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. It takes fresh oil to command fresh impact. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. And then my eyes shall see my desire upon my enemies. And my ears shall hear my desire upon the wicked that is not against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow up like the cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of God, they shall flourish in the cause of our God. They shall still bring forth fruits in old age. As long as the oil is fresh, you don't lose relevance. As long as the oil is fresh, your enemy cannot subdue you. As long as your oil is fresh, you see your desires against your enemies. You will still bring forth fruit in old age to show that the Lord is upright and is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. No one, Jesus says, I've been taking the old wine, straight where desires the new, for he says the old is better. What an error. What an error. When once the oil in your engine, your car engine, goes stale, you don't change it, your engine will knock. Many people in the body of Christ are operating with the stayed oil, stayed oil, stayed oil. Many of us are long overdue for fresh oil. And praise is one of the platforms that engenders access to fresh oil. No one's head here shall lack fresh ointment again. When the fuel or the oil in your lamp is exhausted, the light will go out. When your light goes out, darkness will prevail. It takes fresh oil to keep commanding victory and triumph in every battle. It takes fresh oil to keep going forward and never backward. It takes fresh oil. And fresh oil will answer to, among other things, thank God for prayer and fasting, it will answer to praise. It will answer to praise. Hear what the Lord said about David. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. Psalm 89. And verse 20. 24. The enemy shall not exert upon him, neither the son of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down his foes before his face and plague all them that hate him. Those are all manifestations of the fresh oil. I pray tonight that no one's head 
shall lack fresh oil again. Amen. Say with me, my head shall not lack fresh oil again. My head shall not lack fresh oil again. Let's acknowledge the fact that Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. But the Father is the anointer with fresh oil. How God anointed Jesus with Holy Ghost and with power. We can't assess the presence of the anointer without praise. And we can't get freshly anointed without assessing his presence. Therefore, we must make a choice to make praise our lifestyle so our head will not lack fresh ointment. The sons of wickedness shall not afflict you anymore. Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me close here with the last point. What is in praise? Can I hear you say with me? The glory of God is in praise. The glory of God is in praise. In 2 Chronicles chapter 5 and verse 13 to 14, we saw the singers, the Levites, all with one voice praising God. And their sound was heard in heaven and the glory of God descended so much so that the priest could not stand to minister. Praise is a facilitator of the glory of God. I met a man of God recently. He's 71 years old in ministry. He got hit by an attack. He was even asking for God to take him. But there was his wife and three other men of God that were standing with him in his house. And the glory of God fell. He stood from that wheelchair instantly. The glory of God creates an atmosphere for the supernatural. As you praise him, you enter into his realms of glory. And every story, negative story hanging around your life is turned to a testament of glory. Praises or praise is one way we facilitate the glory of God that changes our story for the better. And glory is the cure for shame and reproach. Therefore, I decree tonight that as you enter into realms of praise, this night, every issue of shame and reproach around anyone's life shall be turned to testimonies of glory. Israel was journeying under the glory cloud. The Bible says, their clothes did not wear out. Where are they burning from? I don't know. Their legs were not swollen. Forty years. No need for air care delivery. Forty years. For forty years. For forty years. They were permanently under the glory cloud. I pray tonight, you'll never miss the glory cloud again in your life. It makes you a living wonder among men because you are under the glory cloud. You are perpetually under the glory cloud. You are perpetually under the glory cloud. They went through that journey. Not one of them was destroyed by a wild beast. The glory cloud. It caused the rock to bring forth water for them. The glory cloud. He cleaved the rocks and the waters gushed out. The glory cloud. Water supply for three million people. For 40 years, they were under the glory cloud. My prayer is that the end result of this convention will be you and I living permanently under the glory cloud. You shall be living permanently under the glory cloud.
You shall be living permanently under the glory cloud. Just get addicted to praise as a lifestyle. I once traveled with a very senior friend in ministries, about one hour, 30 minutes, from my old church to the new one. And he said to me, because he has a way of calculating things, he said, between this journey, I have said, praise the Lord, hallelujah, 72 times. He wasn't even sure whether I was following the discussion. It has become an addiction. May praise become your new addiction from now. May praise become your new addiction from now. May I conclude by saying, if you have lost anything, God is the reason why you have not lost everything. Give him praise. If you have lost anything, God is the reason why you have not lost everything. Give him praise. You stand the risk of losing the remaining things if you won't praise him. If you have lost anything precious, God is the reason why you have not lost yourself up till now. And so let everything that has bread shout hallelujah. Let everyone that still has bread shout hallelujah. The fig tree may not seem to blossom. There may not be fruits in the vine. The fruit of the olive may have failed. The foam may have been cut off from the floor. The word says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 to 19. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord and he will change my story. Somebody's here tonight for a dramatic change of story. You are never going to return the same way you came. You are never going to return the same way you came. Can I say this? Love is not a gift. Love is not a calling. I mean, praise is not a calling. Praise is not a gift. Praise is a commandment. And when you obey him, you have committed himself to or committed him to manifest himself to you. Let the people praise thee, O God. It is that spiritual mathematical constant that provides answers to your complex situation. Any day, any time, anywhere, praise will work. At the midnight of the ordeal, they were to be brought out the following day to be killed. Paul and Silas, some priests allowed, and God stepped in. God is stepping into your fear tonight. Shall we all rise to our feet, everybody? Give the Lord a big clap offering, everyone. Come on now, let's rise to our feet, everyone in church. Lift up your hands to heaven. I begin to celebrate your God. I celebrate you, Jesus. If I've lost anything, you are the reason why I've not lost everything. I celebrate you, Jesus. Thank you and bless your name, Jesus. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. His hallelujah will be in my mouth all the days of my life. Come on now, celebrate him. You are changing level. God is changing your story. Magnify him. Celebrate him. It's your turn for a change of story. Celebrate him tonight. Give him glory. Give him praise. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. No praising church can ever be defeated. Until you defeat God, you cannot defeat a praising church. Until you defeat God, you cannot defeat a praising believer. Therefore, I pray tonight that each one returns with a new garment of praise. Yeah. Lift up your two hands to heaven. Now, 
Take your new garment of praise in the name of Jesus. Return home tonight with your new garment of praise in the name of Jesus. That garment will never wax old on your body. That garment will remain ever fresh on your body. Return home tonight with the oil of joy on your life. Nothing shall break your joy in the Lord anymore forever. I pray tonight that your praise will remain acceptable to God all the days of your life. No praise believer ever gets stranded, you will never be stranded again. No praise believer ends up a failure, you will never see failure again. No praise believer ever lose a battle. You will never lose any more battle in your life. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appearing before God. Every weakness, every sickness hanging around anyone's life. I command your liberty in the name of Jesus Christ. You are leaving this convention a brand new man, a brand new woman in Christ. And so shall it be. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everyone.